Good morning. Time to make the Ticino. So I'm finishing up the hazelnut here and I'm going to be moving on to uh, a French roast. So this is kind of half and half. Well, we had a frost last night. I hope everything's still doing okay out there. It's not the first frost it's been through, so I guess it's okay. Um, and it's only going to be like 49 today. So not the warmest day. This afternoon we're supposed to get uh, some rain. So we'll see, but right now it's nice and sunny, which is always good. So I don't think I'll be doing any outside garden work today. I'll just take a little stroll through the garden just to see what's what. Maybe clean up a little of the dog mess and call that good. I still have lots to do inside here. Always lots to do. So sometimes I have to make a decision of I'm just not doing anything today. Sometimes it's two or three days where I just do the minimal amount of things and then I get my energy back and then I start up again on doing what it is that's my main priority. So, oh, stop dripping. <laughs> okay. So I don't plan on going anywhere today. But you never know. Tomorrow I have to take my mom to the dentist. So I'll be going out tomorrow, but I'm not going to shop yet. I'm going to wait till the beginning of next month and do a little bit of shopping then. There's just a few things that I have to get. I'm not going to stock up a lot on produce, maybe just some salad fixings because I still want to work on the things that I have in my freezer. All right, I put a little less water in here today, make it a little stronger. So let's give it a try. Cheers. Yeah, taste about the same. I think it's good. I mean, it not as good as coffee, but for now it'll do. So some of you have left me comments on other things you've tried um, when you were uh, doing a coffee substitute. So if anybody else knows anything, um, and I'm probably just going to start going back to decaf because that doesn't didn't seem to bother my stomach as much. Or I'm going to look for a low acid coffee that um, maybe I'll try and ease my way back into having regular coffee and then just not have it every day. Maybe have it every two or three days. And maybe that won't irritate my stomach as much. I really should do something about my diet. I mean, I am a vegetarian, but, you know, there's still things that could aggravate your GI system or multiple things. It doesn't just have to be one thing. You know, some people are lactose intolerant. Some people can't have gluten. Some people can't have both. You know, so, and I know it's very limiting into what you can eat, especially when you dine in restaurants, but I don't do that very often very often anymore so I guess that doesn't matter but maybe I should just start off with oatmeal and have that for a while that has a lot of nutrition and I don't think there's any veggies that bother my stomach um, so I could have oatmeal and veggies <laughs> gee that sounds exciting <laughs> anyway uh, I've had this problem for a long time. It's not new. And I have tried gluten-free for a while. I went 
dairy-free and went to the vegan cheeses and stuff. But then I realized that most of the vegan cheeses that you buy are mostly fat. So, you know, there's not a whole lot of protein in those. And so I went back to regular cheese because at least you get some protein with that. I mean, you can make your own out of nuts. That would give you a little protein. But I don't know. I have to play around with it. And, you know, once I get the gardening done, I'll have a little more time to fool around with that. So, and, you know, with me, because I mix and match a lot of foods, it's not like I can say, okay, I ate this today and that bothered my GI system, or I ate that today. You know, I would have to eat the same thing all day long, maybe for a couple days, and see if it made a difference. So I guess it's a lot of detective work. Um, I think you can go get allergy tested, but, you know, a lot of the insurances don't pay for that. They figure, well, you know, you've got an allergy to something, deal with it yourself. So I don't think Medicare would pay for that. So anyway, we'll just carry on. I enjoy food. I enjoy different flavors. I'm not real big on spicy hot foods, but I do like uh, well-seasoned foods. So, and you never know. It could even be a spice that you're adding to your dishes. You know, you'd probably have to just start off with salt and pepper. So, I'm not sure. I don't know. I have to do some research. And there's so many diets out there. Don't eat this. Don't eat that. This doctor says this. You know, even the online doctors, it's like, oh, never eat soy, never eat avocados, never eat tomatoes, never eat this. And then the next doctor will say, yes, eat eggs. No, don't eat eggs. It's just all so confusing. So I guess you just have to do your own detective work and figure out for yourself what's going on, which happens to be happening a lot these days, even with medical conditions. You know, you go in, you have this test, you have that test. Oh, there's nothing wrong, your blood work is fine, blah, blah, blah. And you know you don't feel well, so then you have to start researching on your own. And then... <laughs> Not to be a complaining person here, but even the internet, you can't trust that because depending on the orientation of the search engine, it'll only bring up what it thinks you, thinks you should know. <laughs> oh, things have gotten so complicated. So that's why I like simple. I just want simple. I don't want all this complicated stuff in my life. I don't want a bunch of complicated things in my life. I just want simple. So anyway, that's my rant for this morning. I'm going to enjoy my coffee and go over to my budget book, which um, is improving in as far as the finances go. So tracking things really helps a lot for me. Okay. Well, I will meet you at the budget book, and uh, we'll see what's what. Okay, here we are again. Today's the 25th, and I don't plan on spending any money, but yesterday I did not spend any money. And it's been difficult because I've been looking around on the Timu site, um... And I keep putting things in the cart, then I keep taking things out of the cart. But it's all useful things that I could either use for my garden or my kitchen. And those are two of my favorite places. But I haven't bought anything yet. I am doing a collab, so when um, that arrives, I did pick out some things there. And they actually do have a lot of really good things on there. But I'll see how the quality is when it comes. 
So this morning so far, I'm trying to figure out what to do differently next year with all my seed starts. Because what I have set up now up in my plant germination slash grow room doesn't work real well because there isn't enough room in between the shelves where I have the lights. It's great for starting the little tiny seedlings, but once they get a little bigger, there isn't enough room in between the shelving. So I have to figure out something better for next year. Um, but for now, I'm going to work with it and see what I can come up with. Have you ever noticed whenever I'm making a video, one of my dogs is getting a drink? <laughs> That's what that noise is in the background. And then they mill around, so you hear all the tap, 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 tap. Well, anyway, so that's what I'm doing this morning. Just trying to figure out something different, because you know the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over, expecting a different outcome. So... I guess it's all trial and error. Life is all trial and error, actually. We do things real well, and we do things, we really screw things up, too. But the whole point is to just keep trying new things until you find something that's comfortable. Now, I've been doing this indoor seed starting for, oh, three or four years now. I can't say exactly. The first year I did it, I did it in my dining room and that didn't go well because my whole dining room table was nothing but plants um, for, you know, two or three months. Well, a good couple months anyway. And then I got fungus gnats and that was unpleasant. So I needed to do something different. So then I moved everything upstairs, and I, um, I have shelving up there that was actually a little greenhouse, and I just don't put the cover on it. And it's right in front of a south window. So the window is fine, and the seedlings all come up really well. I've got like a million um, <clears throat> tomatoes and uh, pimento plants and pepper plants. But they're not growing any taller or any bigger because I really need to up-pot them, and I can't because I don't have the room there. So, but it's another three weeks before I can plant outside, which is really kind of too long. This is around the time where I really want to plant things outside, and I can't because, like I said last night, we actually had a frost. So, I have to think about this. If you guys have any suggestions, I'm sure some of you grow things inside, leave me a comment below and let me know how you set things up. And if you have a YouTube channel, leave me a link to your channel and I'll check that out. I watch a lot of YouTube gardening channels, a whole lot. So... I'm either watching that or seeing what's going on in the political arena. And it is an arena. <laughs> it's like a boxing arena. But, um, and then of course there's just for fun, you know, cooking. I, I like to watch a lot of cooking videos too. So anyway, uh, that's what I'm doing today. And I want to get rid of these. Yes, I still have some things sprouting in there, but I'm starting to throw the things away that haven't done anything. And then those are things I potted and nothing came up, so I'm going to put some other things in there. And then that will be going upstairs in my grow room. I don't know where I'm going to put them, but I'll figure it out. So, but these I want to get rid of and just pot up now. So, all right. 
I'm trying not to spend any money today. It is a struggle. The struggle is real because, you know, if it comes right down to it, spending money is fun. At least I think it is. I know there are people that hate to spend money, but I don't hate to spend money. For me, it's a necessity not to spend money. So, okay, I will be back. Oh, today is Tea Tuesday, too. So maybe I'll come back and have a cup of tea with you guys. Well, happy Tea Tuesday. I've got my little gnome mug. I like these for tea because they're black inside, and that way they don't look so ugly. But this is kind of small for a coffee cup, but it's perfect for a teacup. So cheers. So I've been up in my plant room, which is actually my grandson's old room from when they lived here when he was a, a baby. And um, now it's my plant room grow room. But it's a mess. It's a total mess. There's random things in there. So I really want to start working on making that into where I'm going to do my starts next year. Because, um, I mean, I'm not going to do a ton of starts, but um, the way I have it set up now, like I said, it's too small an area in between the shelves. It's perfect for starting the little cells or the little uh, K-cups. Um, it's per a perfect size for that, but as the plants get bigger, um, I can't keep the lights on because then they get burned. So now I've come up with a new idea, and I think this might work. I have other grow lights up there that I haven't been using. So... Um, I'm going to use those, and this isn't my winter garden. This this is just the garden that I have for uh, seed starting and, and starting my own plants for outside. So what I've been doing hasn't been working too well. So I have to figure out something else. And I used to get these, um, I used to get... Uh, Oh, what's the name of that? Uh, it's not Flash Foods. It's where they send you the, the food that's like secondhand um, produce. Anyway, it used to come in these reflective bags, which I saved. So now I set up a new area with a couple of my other grow lights, and I'll show you. Um, with the reflective bags reflecting more light onto the plants as they get taller. So I'm going to give that a try. And I was thinking that a lot of people that live in apartments don't really have a balcony. Sometimes you don't even have a proper facing window. You might have a north window or something like that that doesn't get a whole lot of light. If you have a south window, that's a good window to do starts in. But depending on which direction the sun comes in, at least if you get morning or evening sun, that's pretty good. But if you don't have that, um, you can still set up an indoor garden. Just pick a wall or a closet or a corner. Corners are often wasted space. Um, and it doesn't all have to be in the same area. You can have a corner growing lettuce, and you can have uh, a wall that maybe you put a couple shelves on with some grow lights. Um, if you go on Amazon, you can get some fairly inexpensive, um, like, Arrow Garden knockoffs. I know the Arrow Gardens are really expensive. But if you get some Arrow Garden knockoffs, that's pretty good. So, um, I mean, I, I'm even growing my Meyer lemon tree up in that room. Um, and it was, I just put it in a south-facing window. 
and it even has one little blossom now. I don't think it'll turn into anything. Um, I have to do a little further research if they need to be pollinated. I would imagine they do. I mean, some trees are self-pollinating, but um, I don't know exactly what this one is. I just got this Meyer lemon uh, last year, last spring, and it lived in my garden for the spring and summer, and then I brought it in. Now, this is the third Meyer lemon I've had. I've killed two. And this one seems to be happy, happy living with me. So, you know, you can grow little citrus trees. And uh, I showed you the other day my little um, grapefruit. Now, I have to figure out, <laughs> I have to figure out how to keep them smaller. I don't know if you could do that because they're, uh, obviously they're not dwarf trees. But maybe there's a way. I don't know. Uh, if any of you know, let me know in the comments below um, if you can do that. Now, I know it's going to turn into a tree, but I don't want a tree that takes up my whole living room. So, um, but we'll see how that goes. Um, but the grapefruit and the blood orange I'm growing from seeds from the grocery store. And uh, the little blood oranges are starting to sprout. Um, I'm surprised the grapefruit is doing as well as it is. But that's growing in a little uh, pot with a grow light on the top of it. And it seems to be very happy there. So if you have any interest in gardening, and you don't have to make it complicated. You know, I overcomplicate everything. I'm trying really hard not to do that. <laughs> But, you know, it's hard when you've always kind of been very independent and always uh, done DIYs and, you know, it, it's hard to reel yourself in sometimes. But I need to do that. So once I get my outdoor garden set up the way I want it to make it easier and simpler, then I need to figure out what to do, and I probably should have done this last winter, but I didn't even really think about it until my all my little seeds came up. And this year I've really got a lot of peppers. Oh my gosh, I've got so many peppers. I've got a lot of tomatoes. Not everything is stellar. You know, some of the tomatoes, there's certain kinds that uh, I've grown in the past that did okay, but for some reason I did something wrong with them. And it's uh, Early Girl and Better Boy and a couple of the Proven Winter seeds that were kind of random seeds that I picked up at a nursery. They didn't do well. They aren't dead, but they're knocking on Heaven's door. So, um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So, anyway, that's what I've been doing this afternoon, and it's almost almost three o'clock, the witching hour, where um, I can relax a little bit. Now, believe me, I haven't been killing myself here today. <laughs> but I spend a good hour up in my grow room looking around going, hmm, how can I make this simple but functional so that I can continue to do this? Because if you... It used to be you could get like, the little starts were like a dollar a piece, or you'd get, you know, four for five dollars, or, you know, whatever. But now, everything is so expensive, and so many people are starting to get into gardening. I'm pretty sure this year it's going to be pretty expensive to um, buy all your starts. I'll buy some. Um, there's some mints that I like to buy. A um, couple of my mints are coming back, uh, and if you plant different mints next to each other, uh, they'll cross-pollinate. So if you buy a chocolate mint and a strawberry mint or whatever, you'll probably get chocolate strawberry mint. I don't know, that might not be bad. But anyway, you know, a lot of these mints are hybrids, I'm sure, these specialty mints. 
but I do like to plant chocolate mint. That doesn't seem to like to come back for me. Um, some of them did, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes because I do want to plant a little tea garden. And in that I'm going to put uh, lemon balm, uh, stevia. Now the stevia I'm going to buy, I tried growing it. Some of it sprouted and then it promptly died. I mean the seeds are so tiny and the little, the little starts are so tiny that they're, and it says right on the package that, you know, good luck. So anyway, um, so I need to buy some of the stevia because I like to put the leaves in with the tea. That way it sweetens the tea a little bit. Um, one year I did cut the stevia and dried it, ground it up, and that didn't go well at all because I had green powder floating on top of my tea. <laughs> it doesn't melt like sugar. So, I mean, if you buy processed stevia, of course it does, but not fresh stevia. So, but I like putting the leaves in with the tea. So, I want to plant lemon balm. That's a good tea. Uh, you can also use mulberry leaves. If you have a mulberry tree near you, uh, you can make a tea out of mulberry leaves. Um... What else? Uh, lemon verbena, that makes a nice tea. I want to plant that. You can even do pineapple sage and things in your tea. So I want to do a variety of different things that I can make teas out of and then um, dry those and have them available for the winter. And I'm also uh, saving citrus peels. Uh, it's probably best to get organic and dry those and you can put those in with your tea as well. Lemon, you can make lemon, orange, um, you know, whatever. So anyway, those are some of my plans. Um, and, you know, if, if you have an interest at all in, in any of it, give it a go, you know. Plant yourself a little windowsill herb garden. Um, and get yourself a little tiny grow light and see how well you do. You know, fresh herbs are great and they're so expensive in the grocery store. Oh my goodness. They're, they're just ridiculous. You get a little sprig this big and it's two, three dollars. Um, another thing that you can grow, it's very nutritious. You can grow um, microgreens, those are easy to grow, and all you need is a little tiny space with either a window or a little grow light. And when I bought my grow lights on Amazon, I didn't buy real high-end uh, grow lights, and, and they seem to work just fine. Um, what else? Um, uh, you could do sprouts. You know, uh, even Dollar Tree has packets of microgreens that you can grow. And uh, they don't take long at all. As soon as they sprout, you can cut them off and put them in a salad, on a sandwich. Um, you can even throw them in the soup. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to show you what I set up up there. I'm not going to show you what a big mess the room is. <laughs> That's for another video where I'll actually be cleaning up the room. But I want to show you the setup. And if you get these, um, these silver bags that food comes frozen in, I'll show you what they are. Um, don't throw those away. Save them. Those are like gold. So, okay, without further ado, let me show you what I set up up there. And uh, then I'll be back. Okay, so these are, this was just a lamp that I had, a desk lamp. And I bought a grow light bulb that I stuck in there. And the reason I like it is because it's adjustable. So I have that over these. And like I said, I have a ton of peppers. They don't grow real fast, though. And they're really too small to fertilize yet. You want to wait until they get their they're true leaves, but um, so then I have these tomatoes. I have some calendula. 
These are the ones that are not doing well. For some reason they turned purple and the leaves turned kind of yellow, but like I said, they're not totally dead. So, and these were, um, oh, I can't think of the name of them right now. They're, they're a flower. And they just got too tall and I left them too long. I didn't know what to do with them. So, I don't know if those are Cosmos. That's what those are. I don't know if those are my, oh, make it or not. Some of them are already kind of dead. So I have those, and then this nasturtium that was growing out towards the window. It was getting uh, tangled up in the blinds. So I have that. I have these little tomatoes. They're doing pretty well. These are San Marzano. These are a couple of eggplants. Um, then over here I have more tomatoes. And this is a little Meyer lemon. There's another one coming up. So these are various different tomatoes. So, but like I said, my poor little Cosmos, they, they didn't uh, do too well. I'm going to try and save them, but, but these are all peppers too. But anyway, let me show you what I have set up. So these are the grow lights. They were not expensive. When I bought them, I think I bought them last year. Yeah, last year. They were only 20 some dollars. So I got two of those. And the grow bulb was like maybe five, six dollars. So you can use a, a lamp like that. Um, but this is what I'm talking about with the silver. Um, Imperfect foods, that's what it was. They used to come in that. And I have them down here, and I have them there. You could even make like a little grow tent, you know, tape it together with some um, um, duct tape and make yourself a little grow tent in a corner, and then put your lights in there, and Bob's your uncle. Okay, well, I just wanted to share that with you if any of you are interested in starting a little garden. Start these in the house, and then um, if you're lucky enough to have a balcony, you can uh, grow it on there. Okay, well, I've shown you the other part of it. Oh, dear. Sometimes this just gets... Okay, my phone has been freezing lately. It's old. I'm still using my old phone. This is that bug th the thing that I bought. I think it was like $16. And it's been doing pretty well keeping the fungus gnats in check. So, But this is my Meyer lemon. And this is the one little blossom I've got going. But it's got all kinds of um, new growth. So I put this, here's another option for grow lights. You can buy these shop lights and then put a grow light in there. So, and that's cheap. They clamp on. It's really cheap. So you can get two or three of those. But see, this is, um, this is good for little starts, but then once they get too tall, then they're too close to the lights. So, like these, see these did not do well, but they're kind of on their own now. And I have actually, I have some asparagus coming up. And these were old seeds. So I just planted a bunch of old seeds. I don't know if the rest will come up or not. And then back there I have perennial, little perennials, and this is a red pepper. And like I said, these are all tomatoes, but they didn't do well. So I'm starting some more eggplant here, and these are just the plastic uh, bags that you get when you get like pillowcases and stuff like that. Um, so I save those and I use them as mini greenhouses. These are all calendula. 
I have a ton of pimentos. These are all pimentos. And a few peppers, more peppers, and these are all different tomatoes. I didn't plant these that long ago, so they're, they're still pretty small. But anyway, and these are the grow lights that I have. They're just kind of under-the-counter lights. So maybe you can see it better here. I don't know. And they just have a switch. The only real good grow light I have is this one up here that I bought at Costco a few years ago. But I haven't seen it since then. Those are actual grow lights. But I think I paid $50 or $60 for that. And the, the frame here is just uh, a little, those little greenhouse frames that you can buy. Um, that's all this is. And then I put extra shelves in there. And I just zip tied them. And then I mounted the lights underneath. And then this is where I keep my heat mats. So, yep, that's my setup. It's not perfect, but it works for starting seeds real well. As you can see, I have pretty good um, seed starting germination. But once they get bigger, it doesn't work. So, okay, that's it. I'll be back in a few minutes okay, and we'll wind things up. so that is up. my little setup for my um, starting my spring garden. That's not what I'm going to do my winter garden in. I'll use my arrow garden knockoffs for that. Um, but now in the spring, I, I want to try and save money. I have the seeds, I have the soil, I have the grow lights. So I might as well put them to good use and not just leave them sitting there uh, collecting dust. So trying to use up what I have, uh, keep the, um, the purchase to a minimum. But every year I try and get things that I didn't get the year before so I don't have to buy everything all at once. So, all right, my friends, that's all I have for you today. I think for dinner I'm going to have, I have a little bit of chili left, and I know I shouldn't be eating that. Um, and I think I'm just going to make a chili mac. I have a, a box of uh, macaroni and cheese. This is a room. I have a box of macaroni and cheese from the pantry. And I have some cheese I want to use up um, in my cheese drawer. So that's what's for dinner today. For breakfast, I just I had some rye bread that I had frozen and uh, some of the cream cheese with some vegan salami. That's what I had for breakfast. So, um, yep. Just using up my food, using up my seeds, my dirt, my everything, <laughs> and crossing my fingers that it's all going to come together. So, all right, my friends, that's all I have for you today. I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. This meal was so good. Leftover chili that I had from last November in the freezer, fresh box of mac macaroni and cheese from the pantry, and various cheeses including goat cheese. Goat cheese and cream cheese, so good in boxed macaroni and cheese. I also used up a head of romaine, added more goat cheese and green onions, and that was delicious too using what I have. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. Thanks for watching.